Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another painting um, tutorial. Um, today I thought we'd look at doing a cottage scene, uh, but we're, we're going to be aiming this one at people that are not so experienced. But this will also benefit people that have got experience because it will take you back a bit and you can kind of consolidate areas that maybe you need to uh, revisit. But I've drawn out the scene, okay, there'll be I'm, I'm, I'm not slavishly following the photograph, I'm going to kind of make it easier. Um, I'm just going to block in the shadows and stuff like that and try and keep it simple. Just for anybody else who wants to have a go at sort of creating uh, this painting, they'll learn a lot by shadows, greens, adding some flowers to the borders and things like this and keeping it crisp. But okay, I'm not going to waffle, waffle on, I'm going to get straight on and do it. I'm going to be using my uh, new hate brush show you that for the sky I might use it in other parts of the painting too I've not really used it much so it's a bit of a learning curve for me but um, yeah so we're going to paint this it's draw this I've drawn this scene out and I've very loosely indicated the uh, trees both side there's some little shrubs that go down here now the light is coming from this stuff let me try and show this direction okay so this set, this side of the cottage here will be uh, well lit, while this front gate, this gable end here, and this gable end here will be in deep shadow. So bearing that in mind, we will um, mix our first lot of colours. So for the sky, because it's only a small area of sky, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to add some more paint to the uh, palette. Okay, so I've just added some cerulean blue to my palette. So what I'm going to start off by doing is dampening the page. I like to work an all over wash first. Instead of painting in bits, you know, the sky, then the buildings and the trees, I like to do an all over wash first to stain the page. Okay, so we can get like what I call a ghost wash in. And it does take a little bit of nerve to start with uh, to do it. But once you've got the hang of doing that, you save yourself an all lot, an awful lot of work for the future. So, what I have is a Mr. Bottle like that. Okay, for anybody that's not seen any other videos, I'll show you a simple Mr. Bottle, and I just spray the page like that, and that just helps the the paint move down the page. I don't mind the, the colours all fusing together on the page. I do want to maintain my highlights, my whites, so I've got to paint around those and lift colour out. I don't use masking fluid because I'm lazy, but that's that. Okay, so I'm going to go up here with some cerulean blue. Keep the sky really simple. So I'm using my big hate brush. I'm painting around the. Uh, um, see, it wouldn't matter if I go over this. I might just go over this end of the cottage because it's in shadow, so we can all, we can we can get that in in a way. We can pop that in now. And the same with this one. It's not going to hurt it to have a wash of uh, cerulean blue over it. At least I don't think it is. We'll find out as we progress, but I don't think it will. Where else are we in shadow? That little barn's in shadow. So we've got the shadow in on the barn already. And the house. Okay, now we've got lots of greens going on down here. So, what I could do is I could add some Windsor yellow to the cerulean blue, make it a bit on the bluer side, and I could just start putting this tree in here. So, we're just working our way down the page. Try to keep the wash, wash moving. A bit more cerulean blue. A bit more Windsor yellow, Le lemon yellow, or a uh, cadmium pale will do. Don't worry too much about what colour you're using. There's more trees here. So I'm just, gonna just use your brush descriptively to dance over the page. Now we'll get the roof in. Now the roof is quite a bright orangey colour. 
So I'm going to use some cadmium red and maybe some raw sienna. Because it's quite deep red actually. So I'm just going to put that in. Again, I've not, I'm just using my hate brush. Mm, just have a little look at the picture. I'm not worrying too much if it runs into the sky, it's fine. Keep control of it. There we go, so we've got the roof in already. And we've got that. There's a little bit of red down there on that side. There's a little bit of red down here on the brickwork and around the windows. Put that in now. And it is just a suggestion. I'm not slavishly on the chimney as well. And that chimney. And what we'll do once all this dries later, we'll pull it all together and uh, hopefully make a painting of it. So we go back to our cerulean blue and Windsor yellow, whatever yellow you're using. There's some green in here. It runs down that side. And in fact, it goes up on this wall. We could put that in now, that's quite nice. And then some um, there. Now there's some nice pink flowers just down here. So I'm going to get those in now. I'm going to put a big splash of pink in there for those. There's some up here. And there's some orangey orangey flowers and I'm slightly exaggerating the flowers just to make it interesting now there's some light coming down there which I'll put some pink in for I might just right okay now we're going to go back to our green again I'm going to carry on with the same cerulean blue Wind's are yellow. I'm just gonna quite a dirty yellow. Now freshen it up slightly. I want some real yellow because the light's hitting these quite nicely. So And there's some white flowers in there so I want to keep that broken and that will look like the white flowers and then some more shrubs in there and then at the top where the light's catching them all we'll just put some quite bold colour and then just down here we're just going to have grass so I'm just going to what am I going to do it's going to be quite bright So we're just going to put grass in. It's mixing a bit much on. So I'm going to keep that going all the way down the page. And when we later when we got our shadows in, it will it will all come together, he says. So a little bit more cerulean blue. A little bit more Windsor yellow or whatever. So I've really stuck to the same colours here. Some lines coming down the grass. But what does that all do? Right. I've still got. Well, I'm going to go to another brush now. I'm going to use. I want to get some deep shadows in this side before they dry. So I'm going to go to some cobalt blue. And I'll mix it in with the uh, permanent rose and a little bit of raw sienna just to grey it out slightly so I'm using once I've painted I'll talk to you about what colours I'm using and I'm going to just quickly put these shadows in 
So this is what we're trying to do, get as much information down as we can and keep the painting loose in one attempt. It's a nice warm stone there. Oh, where do we do? And down the bottom, try and leave the windows. Just going to dry my brush out now, and where it's just bleeding into the roof, I'm just going to sharpen that edge up there, like that, just to and I'm just going to do the same on this one. Making sure I'm going round the windows, round the foliage, then I've got to go down the side of the barn so we can have these. Oh, I just picked up the wrong colour. Now that does happen sometimes. And I'm, there we go. So basically that was just uh, the same colour. I'm just popping in the real dark so I can see now. And what we could do in a little while we can come back and sharpen all this up. Now I'm going to concentrate on this tree before it dries and try and get some darks into it. And come back and add more to it later. And then I'll try and put some darks in there. If I could put, then we've got lots of. Let's have a look. Component rows. Always good to have a, a towel or something next to you just so you can quickly clean your brush out because you don't want to be fumbling around trying to find something to clean your brushes out on. Okay, you want to get everything sorted before you start. And now I'm just going around with the cobalt blue, some uh, permanent rose, just dropping in some darks. where they're going to be. In a minute I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to tighten it. When I come back in a bit I'm going to put all the other darks in and keep it nice and fresh. Hopefully. Because you know with all painting there is a element of sort of luck. And these trees in the background. Let's put those in. Okay, just down there, that side of the cottage. And we've managed to preserve the lights there, which is important. Uh, it's looking okay. So there is some shadow on this grass here. So we'll just put that in. Okay, so we'll leave it like that, we'll let that dry and then we'll talk about what we did. Okay, now that's dried. Okay, we, we've, we've put all this down in one go. We used, well, how many colours did we use? We used cerulean blue, um, cobalt blue, Windsor yellow, magenta, and that was it. And uh, we've, uh, oh sorry, we used cadmium red and raw sienna too, just for the roof, the orangey roof. But apart from that, the other colours, all the greens and the mauves and the purples, were just the uh, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, Windsor yellow. 
Um, so now we end up with like a fuzzy looking picture. Yeah, we've got the bones of the picture down. We've got most of the color. So now we need to tighten all this up and make it to something that resembles uh, what you know, the, the photo, what we're trying to achieve. Um, now, we're just for, the, for those that don't know, obviously I painted a loose style and I am trying to sort of keep it loose and fluid. I don't want a photographic finish. I want to put my interpretation on the photo and uh, put my spin on it and how I like to see things. Okay, so bearing that in mind, we'll push on. And I might just start off by having a look at this tree here and work my way across. That way that I'm keeping my hand out of what I'm working in. So when I look into the tree, I can see there's a nice tree trunk going up the center of the tree. So for that, I'm going to be using some cobalt. There's a little bit of a gentian there, which I can't help. And a little bit of light red. Just to make a nice bluey brown. Let's see what, how we go with that. Now with this I want to make lots of lost and found edges so I'm just looking at the picture and I'm just going to start off by laying the brush down on the page, pressing down and just letting it, let the paint go. Remembering that there will be leaves that want to cover up parts of the trunk. So you've got to make sort of let certain areas disappear. Come back down there. Then I go back to it and I just soften some edges. So we haven't got all hard edges, some soft. Just so it's melting away. And then we just draw some more up. I just change now to a smaller brush because there's not that many uh, leaf shapes. Uh, trunk, tr much of a tree trunk running up through there. So now I've got my rigger. I can just. Maybe just add a few more to give it a little bit more structure. Okay, now while that's still wet, I can come back to my dark green. I can add some Windsor yellow, some more cerulean. Now add a little bit of magenta to it. Oh, sorry, alizarin crimson more cerulean and make a much sort of grayer bluer green now if you're not sure how to mix these colors you can go to the color mixing DVD um, video and that will show you how to do that so you have to make a good range of dark greens I'm just mixing those now and see my palette there Sorry, I'm painting with a daylight bulb because I'm this evening time. So there's a little bit of reflection in there. So I'm getting some nice grey greens going on. And now I just want to add some shadows to the tree. I can go back into um, the trunk later and darken it again. But at the moment I just want to sort of Do my own thing really. And just sort of play. We want a bit more yellow, a bit more green at the top. It gets to the light. And I want to make sure I get lots of nice broken brush strokes at the top of the tree and just by pushing the brush down I can get more of a, a broken effect so it looks like leaf leaf shapes 
cobalt. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of um, ultramarine, a little bit of light red. Just to darken that trunk down again in places before I lose it completely. That's why I think it needs it. And we're just working the paint around the page. The more you do this yourself, the more you'll get a feel for it. But it's like anything. It's uh, it's practice. And uh, the more you get a feel for it, the more you practice, sorry, the more you get a feel for it. But I'm not slavishly, like I keep saying, I'm not slavishly following the, uh, the photo. I'm doing what I want to do. Okay. Now I'm just making where some dark, brighter greens, just adding some almost neat winter yellow just to highlight areas. I can come back to this later and play around with it. I'm just going to leave that like that for some day. Now I'm going to go back to the barn here and we'll just sort of tie that in. And I'm just going to add some raw sienna to my ultramarine mix to make a nice dark. Right, so I'll make some, add some cobalt blue with some magenta. I want to just make a nice grey, dark grey, stony colour. So it's magenta, cobalt blue, and a little bit of raw sienna. It's very dark, this. But it does, it warms up in places. So, I'm just going to... Because what you've got to remember in watercolour paper, it's the darks that make the lights. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of neat raw sienna on, into it. So I'm not just keeping it going one colour, I'm changing the colours that comes down the page. Now I'm going to go more towards a bluer colour. I'm going to add that. Go around the window. Now I'm looking for where... Now it's interesting actually because when I look at the picture I can see kind of red in the stonework and even though it's making more work for me, it gives me an opportunity to add some change to the colour. So I'm just going to pop that in now. But it's just down the side of that end of the house, of the sort of shed, barn, whatever you want to call it. I just follow my way around. Now I've got some nice shrubbery here. And it goes all the way down. And I've got a nice shrub here which I want to work my way around. Keep the brush flowing nicely. Make sure always make sure you've got plenty of paint on your brush. Don't let the paint dry out. Because the minute you've got to go back and get some more paint, it breaks the rhythm of painting. And 
then you're going to be starting again. So get your brush fully charged with paint. There we go. And that's that really, that's the barn done. All we've got to do is add, when that's dry, we'll just add the window in and pop that. Just going to add a bit of brickwork here, which we can show. But we've got some very rich colours in there. And uh, looks good. We'll come back down to here now. We've got a wall that runs down here. It's kind of red. So I'm going to take these opportunities to put that in. And also add the darks. The top of the wall is lit, so I'm making sure I'm leaving the top <coughs> lit and doing the underneath side. Okay, so basically, I'm making sure I've got plenty of darks in my palette. Okay, I'm working those three colors, adding a little bit raw sienna, and I'm just making grays. So you could do a lot worse than to practice your grays, your dark shadow colors, because. To get you need those to create the impacts within the painting where where the paints run uh, uncontrollably I've kind of adapted the painting to suit where that's happened but that's fine that's what we are you know that's what we're doing we're painters at the end of the day we're not going to be doing I'm not doing f complete copies of photographs um, because that's not what I do. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that if that's what you choose to do, but that's not what I do. Right, so I'm just going to put these windows in. One, two, two. We've got an extra window, but never mind. We've got five in mine. There's only four in the picture. But that's okay. Um, right, now I'm going to work on this end. And it starts off quite warm at the top. Getting this this top shape is important. I don't wanna because it's that nice crisp. That's it. That's fine. But I don't want that to dry. I want to keep working it. Again, there's some red stone work in there, so we'll just drop that in. It's kind of red bricks within the... So it's just a question of actually pushing the... Uh, pushing the brush down. Like that. Don't just use the tip of the brush. Use use the whole brush and you'll find you'll get a lot more control again it's one of these things that take a little bit of getting used to but uh, when you do it will uh, pay dividends to you because you'll produce much more uh, real no, not realistic much and it's it's funny actually it's not a question of being realistic it's a question of being artistic <laughs> and um bringing something to the paintings that the view that that, that you know individ so bring something more than just what the photograph does now the photograph actually is absolutely beautiful and i'm not saying i'm improving on it all I'm saying is that you're just adding an extra, you know, like I say, you're bringing your spin on it. And that's the whole idea, because we're artists and that's what we're here to do. We're not here to um, slavishly copy photos. Not, 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 not for what I do. You know, if somebody asks for a commission and they ask you to, uh, which I'm sure some of you will go on to do, 
they ask you to do so they're going to expect it to look like the photo well that's fine but my, most of my work ends up in galleries and a uh, gallery and stuff and they then you know haven't sorry I'm just concentrate on that so it's a bit different right so now I've got to go around this little tree here the tree here I want to keep around it so it looks like it's part of the wall there's a little bit of tree there it's those bits that make it look interesting you've got to take use the opportunities you've got to create something you know a lot of these opportunities you won't know that they're there until you actually stumble across them um, you know it's often they're often created accidentally okay now we'll just put the, the windows in and I'm just going to be using some cerulean blue to reflect the sky back I think we'll have the right amount of windows in this one Okay, so there we go. So we have the bottom end. Go back up to the top, a sec. Now we're going to go have a look at the chimneys. What have we got going on? And I'm just using a greyed out red for those side of this uh, okay. so basically this is just um, cadmium red just concentrate on that yeah cadmium red with um, some actually there's some cerulean blue in it which works quite well and we'll just go down this chimney and we'll come back to this in a minute with a rigger and we'll just add a little bits of detail in around the chimney okay and then we've got these windows at the front i'm not going to be messing about those for too long because if you're outside painting you've got to make these decisions ever so quickly and but they're just going to be mere indications we've got nice shadows on this wall in a minute which will help a lot so we can wait and put that on we'll just uh Put some windows up here even though they don't show any on the picture I'm going to put some on up there now we want to come back down to the front here I might put my head in the camera no it'll come down the front here and we'll just put some darks actually no actually what we'll do is we'll just concentrate on that lean to Obviously, when you come around to painting this painting, you don't have to make it quite as complicated as, as perhaps I am. You can simplify it, but this is just showing you how I go back. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to patronize people. I don't think we, you know, just to be, be sort of laying down one wash is a bit lame. I think most people are, are, are beyond that, and I think to push yourself from day one is the way you want to go. I don't think we want to be, you know sort of creating stuff that's just just well, it's just boring isn't it 
and you're not really going to right I'm just got some nice little uh, plants growing there so we're just pushing the brush away against the tooth of the paper and it's just doing all the work for us now we're just going to come back to this area and I want to make this nice pink tree here stand out against what the, the, this is growing up against the side of the house so we're just putting some texture on that just to give it a bit more information but as you as you do this as you as you go around your painting you'll automatically um, become tuned in to what needs to be going on right just going to be going to this side again and highlighting that in places this is always a nice stage just because you kind of got the painting most of the hard work done and now you're just going around doing the actual painterly bits and uh, it's quite nice <laughs> the, the, the first wash is always the, uh, the toughest bit really once you've got that bit done you're home and dry it's having the uh, if you if you can create the the nerve to to have to be able to go in and and commit to that first wash, because you will look at it and you'll think, my God, this is all going madly wrong, and uh, stick with it, and then you'll come out the other side. Not always. There will be times when it comes out and it works against you, but uh, most of the time, it will it will be a success and you'll be very pleased with the result and believe me it will make you a much better painter um, if you do that just going back into those areas now we've got a little um, underneath the uh, ridge of this we're going to put in a nice shadow nice warm shadow that. what else we got to do I chose this painting just because of the amount of light that was in it and I just thought it would be a good one for people to actually have a go at and have a mess around because it was because the buildings were up slightly high we're looking up at them so they're quite dominant right now we'll have a little look at the tree behind here because it looks a bit bland back there so we don't we don't too much going on but we just want our eye to be taken over the top of the tree in front um, so we'll just add a little bit of detail and make that the nice glowing hedge here remember when I added the yellows to that I said there was going to be there's some nice highlights in there well now that they're, they're really really there for us to use it's just beautiful this is when watercolor is just like so exciting when you can push out those lights um, it's just you know the best medium I don't I don't know any other that you you can get the same buzz from that you can watercolor personally and I have painted in oils <laughs> so I do know both right I just want to go next thing is to just do a little bit on that ridge on the top of the uh, just a, a little ridge that runs across the top just put that in and now I want to come just down the front here and add the uh, dark greens so now I'm just going to mix some more Windsor yellow. I'm going to go with the cerulean blue again. A little bit of the magenta and more of the cerulean blue. Makes quite a nice dark grey green colour. It just granul granulates on the page and it just looks lovely. It doesn't give you like black holes. It gives you quite I might have to come back over it with a slightly darker wash later. 
but uh, we'll see. Okay. Well, we're uh, right. Okay, now I'll tell you what we can do. We've got a shadow running over the face of the cottage um, over this side because I'm not going to touch that, I'm just going to leave the light on it because I think it looks really nice. But I am going to put in the little shadow that we've got going on there. Um, well, we can. I'll add a little bit of pink to it because it's quite pinky. against the wall here because that's throwing a shadow up against it and that is I've got a few things wrong back here but I don't care they still look okay my drawing I tend to draw very fast so then I look at it afterwards and I think oh I missed that bit or I haven't put that bit in but I usually just leave it I don't usually let's put the highlight on the roof in there. So there's a bit of a nice bit of a shadow that comes out here. I'm trying to work out how it's cast. It's obviously cast by this tree. The sun's coming this way, so we'll just pop it in on the grass. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stay with the cerulean blues today. I don't want to go too dark. And I want to make sure I get this looking realistically. Something like shadows up, put, dropping shadows on. Sometimes a bit, it's not my strongest point. <laughs> but. good or bad but that's how it's staying okay okay then I'm just going to go around with my rigger and uh, tighten a few edges up now uh, this is what I tend to do and then we can have a look at it um, the, the uh, chimney down here wants to be just benefits from that outlining in places just really gives it an extra just question of looking it's you've got to be careful you don't overdo this stage of uh, of lining out. It's just uh, a descriptive stage. It's funny as I always go around doing this sort of stage of the painting and I always no notice bits I think oh, I really should have uh, added that but often too late now. Too liney there. Okay. I don't know how I ended up with too many windows in there, but it often happens with me when I'm measuring windows. <laughs> A couple of little, little branches in here. Just give it a bit more 
structure. And we're nearly there. Oh, there's a shrub that's growing out of here. So we'll just put some branches on there. And a lot of these will they'll die down a little bit as it I won't do anything with that. Don't want to draw my attention to that area too much. But like I say, if you're going to strive to um, make things resemble the photograph too much, you're going to take in my, you're going to take the fun out of painting. Just see a scene and then try and put your spin on it and try and try and make it look like you know how you want it to see, how you want it to be, and you'll just want to put some greens around that. A bit too much paint for me. But we're nearly finished. Um, now, you know, have a go at the painting. Or if, you, if there's questions you want to ask before you have a go, um, come and ask in the forum. Um, and, uh, you know, if I'm there or somebody else will, I'm sure, will help out because we've got some very talented artists. Um, painting there now um, so I'm sure people will be more than willing to help and unfortunately I have to work two days a week in a pub yeah um, I know lots of people will say that's not very hard because I have to work six days a week or five days a week and I would agree but so uh, weekends I'm kind of off the scene if you like because I'm I'm working and then during the week obviously I've you know I've got lots to do here but uh, the, the painting keeps me really busy so I'm just jot dotting around now and just adding any last darks I can see that I think need doing that last minute I'm a bit of a fiddler I shouldn't really, because I'll tell everybody else not to. But uh, the only other thing I can see that needs doing is just a couple of darks on the windows in places. So, yeah, so um, that's there. And on that one, this bottom ones. So they're not all the same. These are all the same, really. But we'll make them a bit different in places. Okay. Well, thanks so much for. I hope you have a go. Um, there is a shadow that runs across here, but I don't think, think I'll put it in. Um, yeah. So have a go. It's pretty simple. Um, I'll put a list of what colours I've used um, on the description at the end, of, at the beginning of the video. Oh, you'll have seen that already. And. Um, I hope you get something out of it. I really do. Look at me. When I turn this camera off, you know, I'll be fiddling. I'll be doing more. And then I'll, I'll wreck it. Well. There. That takes you right out there. But. Okay then. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Have a go at the painting and let's bring it to the forum and let's see what you can do. Uh, thanks so much for watching and bye for now.